China was the first country to be hit by COVID-19. And with their experience and hindsight, Chinese medics are now sharing their knowledge on how to contain the virus in Africa and around the world. CGTN spoke with two medical experts from Sichuan University, who recently traveled on an aid mission to Ethiopia and Djibouti. They shared their experiences on the ground and their impressions of local responses to the pandemic. Take a look. So you just returned from a trip to Ethiopia and Djibouti um, to help in the fight against COVID-19. Um, could you just introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about the work that you were doing in China before you went to Ethiopia and Djibouti? Okay, yeah. Uh, let me introduce myself. Yeah, I'm Dr. Chen Yong, and uh, I'm the leader of this team, and uh, also I'm a surgeon, and uh, I am the vice president of the Western China Hospital of Sichuan University. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dr. Zhong Zhi Yong. I'm an infectious diseases physician specialist, and I'm also in charge of infection control. So I do a lot of training and I do a lot of this uh, arrangement uh, to try to protect our healthcare workers and try to minimize the transmission in our hospital. Um, and can you explain a bit what the aim of the mission was and who was in your team? I heard there was 12 people. So can you talk about the, the kinds of people who came on this mission? Oh yeah, I think the assisted uh, my mission is assisted the uh, fighting against the COVID nineteen in the two countries by sharing the Chinese experience and give some recommendation and suggestions according to the uh, local uh, local situation in the two countries, and uh, we were talking with the. And officials of the government and uh, healthcare workers and meeting the first friend of doctors in fighting against COVID-19. Also, we were um, donating some PPE for the um, hospitals in the two countries. Yeah. So the, in, in terms of the uh, professional backgrounds, uh, we are from different special uh, specialties. Uh, all of us uh, are medical professionals, so we largely focus on the medical side. Uh, that that uh, includes uh, testing, uh, contact tracing, uh, quarantine, isolation, uh, and infection control in hospitals, uh, protection of uh, healthcare workers, and also patient management. Mm -hmm. Um, and Dr. Zhang, you mentioned um, bringing um, PPE and medical supplies and donations as well as the training. Um, could you talk a little bit more about that? What did you bring and how were they distributed? Our government donated, the uh, Chinese government donated some of the PPE for the Ethiopia uh, or GPT government, especially in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. the PPE is very, very shortage. So we can we bring some of the PPE to these doctors or healthcare workers. I think we'll give some help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the PPE includes masks, uh, goggles, face shields, yeah, uh, guns, gloves, and uh, protective uh, clothing. We donated the PPE according to our experiences. Yeah. China is the first country affected by COVID nineteen. So in certain period of time, we really have a shortage of PPE as well. So because we experience that shortage, we find it's, it's critical to have the PPE available. So we emphasize uh, the, the supply. And when you went to Ethiopia and Djibouti, what did you see to be the main challenges um, when it comes to containing the virus? I think that in both countries, there's a common uh, major challenge. That is uh, how to prevent and control of the spread of the virus in the communities. Uh, they are in many res residential areas. Uh, they're so crowded. Actually, in single households, there are multiple, sometimes uh, more than 10 uh, people living together. It's quite a challenge to already control uh, the spread in such condition. This is one major challenge. I think another common one is uh, both governments also are facing a very difficult uh, uh, choice between 
uh, the very string, uh, stringent public health uh, measures, I mean uh, lockdowns and the uh, rebooting of the economy. For vulnerable communities living in informal settlements um, and slums in the continent, what is your solution or your answer to kind of containing the virus within these environments where there's no access to running water, where people can't really self-isolate? I think in Ethiopia and Djibouti, their, their governments really uh, put a lot of efforts try to solve this, this problem. For example, uh, they provide a lot of the water tanks and water buckets mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, residential area because they are short of running water, but they provide this kind of the water supply so for people to use uh, to perform hygiene. If you look at many African countries, including Ethiopia and Djibouti, um, the number of cases seem relatively low in comparison to other parts of the world like the US or Europe or Brazil. Why do you think that is? I think the Ethiopia and the Djibouti have different situations. So yeah. in Ethiopia, because the, the number is low, uh, I think uh, probably largely uh, due to the efforts of the country to contain the virus. For example, they did a very excellent job try to con uh, control the imported cases. Uh, but it's also major to uh, their limited uh, capacity of testing. So I think under-tested, uh, maybe also contribute to the low number. And in Djibouti, Djibouti has a, a very small population, so around one million. So even if the, uh, the case number is low, but the infection rate per capita is actually is quite high. Uh, it's the highest in African, uh, the continent. So it's a different, a different story. Um, how do you see COVID-19 progressing on the continent? What kind of trajectory do you see? Uh, I think in the Africa, they have a very different population structure, uh, very different from the Europe and uh, North America, even di very different from our China. Uh, because uh, the African population usually are uh, much younger uh, than those uh, in other continents. So I think they um, relative, have a relatively uh, low number, also the population the age structure also contributes to that problem. Another one may be uh, because uh, in Africa, the weather, most countries are relatively hot. Like in Djibouti, the temperature can be 40 centigrade uh, at daytime. So because the heat can reduce the transmission of the virus as well, and the, for uh, Europe and uh, China and uh, North America, the transmission largely occurred in the winter time. So this also uh, contributes to uh, the low number, maybe. Uh, in terms of the, the trends, uh, it's very difficult to predict, uh, as everyone is vulnerable uh, to the disease. So I think it's still now, it's still, uh, we still see the, we see the increase of the, the cases longer. Uh, hopefully, um, in the near future, future it can be controlled. Uh, in Ethiopia and uh, Djibouti, the governments and the health sector, sectors take this pandemic very seriously. We are very impressed by their efforts. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. And it was really great to get your insight on the situation in Ethiopia and Djibouti and the world in general. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.